You may hear young boys and girls say, I want to be a fashion designer when I grow up. While few actually accomplish this, today on Fit to Stitch, we meet C.D. Green, who worked for Tommy Hilfiger for a short time, then moved his amazing talent from Chicago to New York. Join us as we peek inside his New York studio to see his dazzling designs and hear his story. Fit to Stitch is made possible by Kai Scissors. Benno's Buttons. OC Sewing, Orange County. Vogue Fabrics. Pendleton. Imitation of Life. And Clutch Nails. Well, I am thrilled to meet you. I have, like, I hope you don't feel stalked because <laughs> I know a little bit about you. But I want everyone to know your story because there are so many little boys, little girls who want to be you when they grow up. And I think if we share your journey, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. it'll help them see that oh. the choices you made, the, mm -hmm. the corners you turned, mm -hmm. um, they can take the, they're all a matter of choices and layering those Absolutely. choices one on top of another. I know your father wanted you to be what? Uh, a physical therapist. He wanted you to be a physical therapist. Yes. So that's kind of what he... He, he, he thought it was like a st something stable. He thought it would, you know, I, I, I maybe it was something I might be, become interested in, but it was totally not me at all. When did you figure that out? Because that's tough um, as a young like, person. Like in high school when you're thinking about what do you want to do. And, and I always knew, even when we were having those conversations, that I really wanted to be a designer. But I didn't want to talk about it too much. I kind of kept it to myself. And um, I was into fine arts. And so I think that he thought, you know, this is a, a much better, stable life for yourself than being an artist. Who knows about your success when you're an artist? It's a big chance. It's a leap of faith. Of course, and I, I can't imagine very many parents hearing that their child wants to be a designer say, oh, yeah, I'm right in on it. <laughs> you know, that's just a very yeah, ambiguous, yes, sure, yes, sure. Yes. So he obviously accepted it on some level. He accepted it because my mom <laughs> Um, said, you know, I believe that he has something special. I believe that he has something, you know, different that he can offer, you know, whether it's in fine arts or wh whatever. She just always believed in me and she would um, say, you should believe in yourself and you, you have talent. She, and so when I went to apply to art schools and I applied to art schools in New York and, and in Chicago, I went to the, art Institute of, the school of the Art Institute of Chicago and I was accepted and um, I was so excited because I, I was totally thrilled because I was looking forward to doing what I love. Sure, I can't imagine. I mean, I, I, I can't imagine because I followed the same thing and my father's, you know, my family is doctors, you know, and so here I am kind of, you know, out of this orbit. So I totally understand that and yet at the same time it's a really convincing thing. So lesson number one we could say is you really have to hear yourself mm -hmm. and follow totally. what you think yes. is the path for you. Mm -hmm. So, but even when you went to art school, and you didn't get to go to the one you really wanted to go to, you kind of, no. you know, they were just so expensive. They were expensive, and my mom was not happy with me coming to, to New York to go to school. She was just like, out of the question. Because you're said, from Chicago. I'm from Chicago, mm -hmm. and she's like, New York is so, you know, fast-paced, and... You know, I'm afraid something's going to happen to you. Yeah. It's like, you know, nothing's going to happen to me. I really wanted to go. And I was accepted at a couple of schools, but they were just like, no, just go to Chicago, go to the school here. And, you know, they just felt more comfortable with sure. it. But then I, I, I loved Art Institute of Chicago. It was a great school. And a question for you, because you actually, as you go into art school, I don't know how many have been there, but you, you have choices and you have fashion merchandising and then you have 
graphic arts. Yes. And so you actually didn't do fashion merchandising. No, what, what I what was going to be my main focus of focus of interest at, at the Art Theater Institute was graphic arts. Right. Because I, I, love, I love graphic arts. Which is more the engineering, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, and, the, yeah. and the design yes. feature. Yes, like product design, that sure. kind of thing. Which is very, very interesting. But I always hung out with the kids who were in fashion and the kids who shopped at the resale stores and bought stuff and you you know you you invent yourself through other other cl uh, through clothing from you know stores and you wear them differently than no everybody else conventionally wears a sweater sure. and so i love these kids and and they were creative and fun and so we just hung out together as a matter of fact i would go to their classes more than i would my my own classes and my instructor, the instructor thought I was in her class, but she, I says, no, I'm not. And she's like, you can't keep coming. You just <laughs> get in the class you and have you to can either come. pay or get out. Right? Yes. And so I said, okay. I, and um, the next, next semester I did, took all fashion classes. And I just started to believe in what I wanted to do was important. And it just made me super happy to do it. You know, and, and again, listening to yourself. Yes, totally. And so for all kids out there who whatever age you are it's totally believing in yourself and you, you feel that passion that you know it's right for you yeah you know yeah mm -hmm. even when your dad says it's even physical therapy for you son therapy. oh my gosh <laughs> my mom was so against it's like are you kidding but um it was wonderful and they became very supportive and they helped you a lot oh it's, they were very supportive but you went way. to new york even against your mother's yeah. good wishes after, like later like <laughs> you know after I, I had gone to the art institute for almost four or four years and then a friend of mine I was like, I really got to get out of the city, and I want to learn more about fashion. And so I came to New York, and um, I got a, jo a little job working at a not, uh, not very great big big brand or anything. But I think that what helped me the most was not working for a big brand. Is that I had a chance to sort of create my own identity as a designer, mm -hmm. you know, um, and develop my own style and, and things of that nature. So I, so that that was a, a, a wonderful journey to to realize um, that I could create something that wasn't what everybody else was doing. So I'm going to say maybe along that way you were finding uh, the hole, mm -hmm. the hole that you wanted to fill. I think mm -hmm. every designer, as I look at how they, how they possibly made it, it just seems like mm -hmm. they found a hole. Mm -hmm. And they found a hole that they loved being in and that they could really yes. take hold of that. Mm -hmm. And I do think that takes time and I think it takes oh, it experience does. to it really does. You kind of have the ambition, and then, but, but how am I going to do it? And so, mm -hmm. you know, slow may be the pace, but steady at the same time. I think time. that's always the best way. Because I've got a lot of experience. I worked for a sweater company. I worked for a dress company for a while. And so you get a little bit of experience here. You kind of like, at, 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 it kind of collects, and you sort of like take what you, that knowledge, and you add it with this, and then you do, you know, you, you do, do your own thing for a little bit, and, um, then you work for another company and you learn what what they have to offer and then yeah. you build up like this portfolio in your mind of different creative ideas and processes and it and it really helps you as, as a creative person to get as much different exposure as possible different exposure mm -hmm. and then when what what was the biggest day when was it the first time you got your line you opened a line and the biggest day was friend of mine Ron um, was working at the store and he had met um, the fashion coordinator for Bergdorf's, and so she says, "He says I'm talking to talking to you, to her about you. She wants to see your collection." And I was like, "Oh, fabulous!" So I um, I already had a group of a collection, but I hadn't shown it to anybody, and so I made the appointment and I went to see How her. How nervous were you? <laughs> Extremely. <laughs> Just curious, like Bergdorf's. I was, calls. So, I was so totally. So we had had a meeting, and she says, "She says these are very pretty dresses. Let's show them to Dawn." And I'm like. Don Mello, my God. So then we take the on the hangers to her office. We're on the elevator and there were clients there were quest shoppers and they were like, That's that's really pretty with floors it on. And then so Liz says, No, oh, it's not good. in the store quite yet. We didn't sign the customers. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and so then we go to Don's office and she's sitting behind this big desk and we show her the the dresses and she's like, Those are beautiful. Let's give him a window. And I was like, wow. you mean I got in Berkeley and I'm getting a window? So that was a wonderful moment. Wow. 
Yes, yeah. but then later on they told you. What did they tell you? They wanted you to change, which well, I find fascinating. Well, it's, it was like I had like a very young, kind of um, kitschy kind of collection, which was fun, mm -hmm. and it, it did well, so well. But I kind of wanted to, like, become not just the kitschy designer. I wanted it to have more of a couture edge. So for a while, I had to sort of like reinvent myself, and I and I had to reestablish myself as C D Green. So. Um, after a, a several attempts, you know, we, we called the store and I said, I have a new collection now. It's like much more grown up. And so they were like, okay, we'll take a look. And I had a wonderful um, fashion creator came up and she looked at the collection and she says, you know, we, we love your collection and we love your lines. We love um, your proportion. We, 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 we love your, um, how you address a woman's body. It's wonderful. She says, but you have to do sort of what of an upgrade. She says, whether you're doing the jerseys, do cashmere. Where, you, where you're doing mink, you have to do chinchilla or sable. So I was like, okay. So I just created another collection using more expensive fabrics, you know, um, more detail, more hand finishing. And we called again and we were like, okay, come look at the collection. And I was holding my breath that day. No and, kidding, because um, now you spent all the money creating yeah, all of creating this. Creating it. <laughs> and so they said, okay. And, and, the, and um, the gentleman who came up, he's like, this is beautiful, I love it. He says, I love your, your sense of style, everything. And then a few days later they said, they called and said, yes, you're in. And I was like, totally ecstatic. And um, I was given like a major part in the evening room, which was like inc incredible. And like Linda Fargo has worn my, my clothes, which is like the highest compliment I think, you know, a designer could have. And um, Well, but many have worn your clothes. If we hate to name names, uh, but mm -hmm. let's name names. Why not, right? Uh, well, uh, Beyonce's for one thing, um, Tracy Ellis Ross, Mariah Carey, there's a long well, list. A mm -hmm. But I find it fascinating because you did a dress for Tina Turner, mm -hmm. and yet you never tried the dress on Tina Turner. No, it was like her stylist came to us, and um, I think she had started her Wildest Dreams tour in uh, South Africa, and he's like, she needs something that's got a sparkle, that she can move, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you did that you dress. Have a, yeah, I did that <laughs> dress. I actually made that dress myself. One night till two o'clock in the morning. Till just... like, because the, they were leaving, <laughs> at the flight left at like 11.30 and they were calling, we're on our way to pick up the dress. And I'm like, but you can't pick up the dress. <laughs> it's like, the dress it's almost insane. ready. <laughs> and then it got ready, it was ready. And she tried it and she was like, she loved it. And um, they ordered like several more. And then they even said that she would, you know, keep the dress on and, and like meet uh, her fans afterwards, which is really a wonderful compliment. And to see her in it after I admired her for, forever. And then you'd never thing. even met her. You, the whole thing no. took place. Yes. That's incredible. Yes. That's way skills high. That's like oh, 18 levels higher. You. But really, she's easy. Incredible. She has a great figure and great, the, and needless to say, the most beautiful legs. Um, so it, it didn't need to fit. We just kept making them for her. So those days are beneath you now, and yes. you get to soar on. And I know that you've got now a CDG and Y, which yes. is taking all this beautiful mm -hmm. uh, upscaling mm -hmm. and now making it to where it's just more affordable yes. for women who just mm -hmm. don't want to spend. Mm -hmm. More affordable, more appro approachable, because um, I love the idea of, the, of couture and working one-on-one -on -one with clients. And I think that that's given me a great perspective on how a, a woman's body is and how to make clothes fit how to make them comfortable. I've gotten so many wonderful clients from my couture clients who says, I felt great all night. I was comfortable, I felt glamorous. The details. Never got so many compliments. And, but I want something for my daughter. I want to spend quite as much, develop something. And so that's what CDGNY is all about. Oh, that's so exciting. Mm -hmm. And it just takes you on a whole different level. Yes, yes. You never you stop know, growing. You, you get excited about the next thing. You know, sure. you finish this collection and then in my head while I'm doing CD Gen Y, I'm thinking, but I really want to do the CD Green couture gown, which is going to, t and, I'm, and my, the process is going through my head of how it's going to come together and what's going to be the fabric and what will be the crystal. And then it, it comes into reality. You do the sketch and then I have, I have to say, I have the most amazing you know, staff of, of people who, who, who make me look really good because they, they work so hard it takes and advantage. they care so much, you know, and they're, I, I love them, yes. So do you find that you enjoy the process more with support behind you 
Which is the most enjoyable for you? Hmm. I, I kind of like um, a, a person who likes to have my own space. So I, I love to be just left alone to my own devices and just do what I like to do and be creative. And someone can like throw an idea out to me. Why not, why not this? Why not that? And I'll say, OK, but then I always do what I want to do. So. Um, so I, lo I love that creative process. I love being inspired by like architecture. Um, I love being inspired by movies. Um, I love um, designers like Edith Head and Adrian and Ori Kelly. They inspire me, particularly when you see their work over the 30s to the 40s. And then you see how fashion changed to the 50s. The movies give you this incredible reference of fashion and lifestyle um, that like changes from the 30s to the 60s. And you look a big change, you know, shorts, things embellish simplicity like more architectural shapes and then the 70s where everything's like more funky and cool and you know that kind of thing and um and the music changes that's a big inspiration to me also the music interesting music, yes so you everywhere inspiration comes from everywhere. everywhere from walking down the street and just seeing people how they dress um you know i travel i've traveled you know t to paris i i try to go on a couple of times a year to Premier Vision to look at fabrics. But the most inspiration is just seeing people walking around. And it's amazing, you know, to, and you love to see how that person put that outfit together. And then that gives you inspiration. There's always something wonderful happening in Paris, you know. So that, that, that's, that's a wonderful thing. And um, even in New York, I mean, there's so much great energy here. Um, one of my um, groups that I did with a charm mirror group was actually inspired by um, I was coming out of my apartment and I and a gentleman was on a motorcycle you know biker outfit black leather jeans cap jacket with a huge like ch um, keychain full of keys like a hundred keys I'm like what what does he need these keys for but but the way he had them dangling from the belt it was like so cool <laughs> and I thought you know how can I do something like that, and so I had the idea of doing, I love mirrors, so I had mirrors cut in different charm shapes, and then I did a whole mirror collection based around charms, based around, you know, somebody I never met. <laughs> but that was, uh, like, thank you, whoever you are, for that great idea. So let's see some dresses. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so this is the fun part. Yes. This is the best part. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> That's after all the work's been done, right? <laughs> like, these are, like, what I got famous for when the I first paillettes. started were paillettes and um, a group of the two of these dresses were were styled by the famous um, stylist Franca Sozani and it was an Italian Vogue and it was like a major spread and I was like over the moon and it was it's beautiful it's on I see it on online all the time it's it was just beautiful incredible. but it was a whole silver group but these were the paillettes so this is very light yes these the are dress light. itself is these really these are all light. put on by hand Every row of that. Do you start from the bottom and go up, or just from the from the from the bottom and, and go up? You do. Uh, okay. Yes, around and around and so around. So it has to be straight because if you get to the top and it's not straight, mm -hmm. yeah, you don't want a, a little <laughs> crooked dress. Well, that's what I'm thinking. And yes. If you don't get it right, mm -hmm. you have to just take, take it. them back off and start again. But we have kind of like a little method that we'd use. Ah, you're the method of the madness. Yes. You know, my dad, when I was little, he used to make me put tinsel on the tree one at a time, and I used to <laughs> cheat and throw a whole bunch. You can't cheat on this, can you? No, you can't. <laughs> you, you cannot. Totally There's cannot. no way to cheat. You totally cannot. There's no way to cheat. And um, this was also yes. featured in, a, in Italian Vogue as well, another time. Oh, my goodness gracious. And these are all pulling by hand as well. Um, this dress was this one of my favorite, favorite dresses, and um, it was in the Bergdorf Goodman magazine, and it was called The Girl Who Fell to Earth, and she's laying on black sand, and I think it was sh shot in Hawaii, but this is like one of my favorite dresses, in the, like, one of my favorite pages from Bergdorf's. And these are all put on by hand. This was the dress that we did for the American Music Awards for Tracy Ellis Ross, where she opened the show in this gown. And um, that was a wonderful moment as well. Now, this is a heavy dress. What would and you say it weighs? At least 50 pounds, at least. 50 pounds? Yes, at wow. least. So Tracy Ellis Ross lives in California. Yes, so again, oh, no. stylist measurements. Really? Get it done. Something like this? We long? did this dress in, I think, two weeks. Long distance. Long distance, and they kind of, but I, I love Tracy, and I, and I, I kind of envision her 
and uh, we had no fit problems whatsoever. She fit, fit perfect. That's because of you. <laughs> and this is a beautiful fabric that I actually picked up um, on, a, on a trip to Paris, a Premier Vision. And I love this kind of feel to it, the graphicness of it and the texture. That's where that whole beginning engineering structural design helps you at this it's, point because totally. you see a little differently mm -hmm. than many. And this is like chain. This is chain now. Yeah. We've is done that as a heavy lot as I of think change. It looks? This one isn't quite so. Oh, it's a little jacket. So it's a little jacket. It's beautiful. And this is the little dress that goes with it. Oh, wow, look at the drape on that. Oh, thank you. And then maybe here. This is the one of this is the actual dress that um, was a part of the Met Gala, one of the earlier ones. Um, it's called Rock Style, and this is the dress that I did for Tina. This was the actual dress that was on display at the Met, which is a wonderful experience to see your dress behind the glass. It was really nice. That is stunning, Thank and, and, you. and they can't even get an idea as to what this weighs. But this, mm -hmm. it's got to be what. It's, it's just, this one isn't quite so heavy. Because it's all like a, st a stretch tool. It's beautiful. Thank you. And then they just wore Thank a little you. slip dress under. She wore nothing under it. She wore nothing under no, it. For little, the record, she wore nothing no, under it. No, just a little G-string, that's it. OK, that's Tina Turner. Well, that's it. She's got the body for it. There you go. Yes. Can't wear that unless you're Tina Turner. <laughs> <laughs> and this is another chainmail idea with crystals also. I love chainmail. I do, too. I love the drape. Look at this. How do you actually cut it? How do you? <laughs> Those are all a your lot trade of tricks. secrets. Tricks, yeah. tricks of the trade. This <laughs> is like featured in the latest Faddy magazine. It's an online magazine. And it's um, a coat with a little exaggerated bow. And the that is beautiful. Exaggerated collar. And this is either, either like little pieces of leather with feathers. And this yeah. is all hand sewn on? Yes. Individually. Yep. Oh, my goodness. But that's light. Yeah, this is very light. This is very light. And this one was actually featured in a Bergdorf Goodman Christmas window. We did this jumpsuit, and it's like a lady on a tightrope, and she's like balancing through this swamp full of these beautiful little creatures that are like all around the swamp. It's beautiful. They do inc incredible windows. I get that vision. Mm -hmm. I actually get that mm -hmm. vision. But what you're saying is you get a vision like that a lot of times mm -hmm. before you even get the dress. Mm -hmm. The vision of what it's going to look like and what it's going to be, and then you work it backwards. Yeah, backwards. Or, or they'll say, this is the window. She's going to be holding an umbrella. She's on a tightrope. She can't fall into the water over this mystical, beautiful water. And I said, OK, a pirate jumpsuit. <laughs> so it's a real collaboration and between. I, yes. Sure. And I did a sketch. And they were like, that one. And so that's Just for the record, there's a zipper in there. Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, there's a zipper going through totally. all those. Yes. Oh, my goodness. So when those are hand sewn on, mm -hmm. they're just made to lap over that zipper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now you've got my heart racing. This, is, <laughs> this, is, this was a fun project. All of the, the bird duck on the windows. Do you think you ever, over all these years, have a favorite dress? Yes. Can really? I get it? I want two. <laughs> <laughs> this actually is a jumpsuit. Isn't that beautiful? I love jumpsuits. And this was featured in the Fifth Avenue Bergdorf Gutman window at Christmas. And the background were all French horns in silver, all different types of horns. And um, this was the one mannequin in front. It was beautiful. Well, there's nothing better than those windows at the holidays. Uh, yes. And Swarovski crystals, can I just? All Swarovski. Oh, my goodness. Yes. So when you actually sew these, because I've done a little bit of beading. Mm -hmm. Do you actually have a plan, or do you kind of evolve the plan of the pattern of the beading? Well, it's sketched out on the pattern. Oh, it is sketched mm -hmm. out. Yes. Even the details of all mm -hmm. the beading mm -hmm. and everything. Like where the larger stones goes, where the smaller stone goes. Oh. And then we look at the sketch the whole time. And then it's like the process, uh, you add more here, you add more there. So you your sketching is actually in proportion mm -hmm. yes. uh, and everything. Totally. Oh, wow. It comes, comes very close to what I, what I sketch. That's impressive. This is like one, I, can't, I, I, I just said three were my favorites, but <laughs> they're all my favorites. That was great insight into how a designer works. The little black dress is a style essential and a must have for many occasions. In our next episode, Laura will be our model while we show you how to get perfect fit while draping this dress, making changes to the pattern tissue, and so much more. Join us next time 
on Fit to Stitch. Fit to Stitch is made possible by Kai Scissors. Benno's Buttons. OC Sewing, Orange County. Vogue Fabrics. Pendleton Imitation of Life and Clutch Nails To order a four DVD set of Fit to Stitch Series 9 please visit our website at fittostitch.com.